Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Myself, Gokul Venugopal, and I will be covering a very interesting topic today, and that is how does a CAPTCHA verification actually work and how it prevents bots from entering into any website. So I assume that most of the guys watching this video might be familiar with this term CAPTCHA verification because I guess almost all the websites have this additional layer of security. And anyway, even if you are not familiar with this term, the word CAPTCHA itself stands for Completely Automated Public Turing Test to tell computers and humans apart. As you can see, the full form itself makes it clear all the intentions of this test and that is basically to prevent bots from entering into any websites. Right. But why to prevent a bot from entering into any website? What is the purpose of that additional layer of security? Why? Why we have to do that? Because I thought bots were actually the best friends of humans. But I was dearly wrong. Because bots are used to commit a lot of fraudulent activities across the internet. And to name a few, credential stuffing, data scraping and DDoS attacks. Credential stuffing is basically stealing data like username and password from one website and applying the same username and password to another website, for example a banking website, hoping that some of these username and passwords will be same on both these websites, enabling the scammer to gain access over the customer's account, which is actually very dangerous. Now data scraping is actually extracting valuable information from the website, for example their content or their price history or the customer details, etc. And lastly, distributed denial of service attacks or DDoS attacks are just malicious attempts in order to disrupt the normal traffic with the website so that the normal users cannot access the website resulting in denial of service to them. This can be explained with a pictorial representation of a car not able to access to the other side of the road due to abnormal traffic in between the abnormal traffic being bots entering into the websites. Well, why can't a human being do all these kind of attacks? Well, they could actually, nothing is stopping them, but since these are kind of mass attacks, it will be most probably executed by bots in an automated way rather than a human being. And thus, in order to protect from all these attacks, drum roll, CAPTCHA was invented. CAPTCHA at first was completely different from what it is right now. As you guys may remember, it used to consist of distorted set of letters and numbers that we need to identify properly and place them on the box. Then we can pass the test. Otherwise, we would just fail the test. Which during that time was extremely difficult for the bots to pass. But as time passed, the bots became extremely capable of handling these kind of situation, which made the developers to make these kind of tests much more difficult, leading to more distortion and leading to a stage where humans just passed only 33% of the time while bots actually passed 99.8% of the time. This led to the inception of very different thinking methodology where it's not about testing the intellectual capability of the human being because it's very hard to beat at their own game, right? Robots are absolutely intelligent in most cases than human beings. In solving the problems and all, they are much more faster than human beings in most cases. So we can't beat at their own game, but we can consider one important crux factor of actually being a human being and that is being imperfect. We human beings are so unique, so different from each other, so stupid so that no bots can actually replace us. Yeah, they can be better than us in many things, but they can never be a human being. And that is the most important crux factor in developing a newer version of CAPTCHA known as no captcha, recaptcha. Now this is the iconic checkbox verification that we see on the websites right before we sign up for something where we need to just check the box. That's it. Well, in some cases it's just that, but in most cases it will be followed up by an additional layer of testing where we have to select some image boxes filled with a particular object. The object being a zebra crossing, a traffic light, a bus, a car, a tree, yeah, some random object, you get the idea. And if they are satisfied with our selection, we will pass the test. Otherwise, another set of images will pop up and we have to repeat the same process until they are satisfied. So you might be wondering how this CAPTCHA verification process actually works, right? Because just by checking a box, they are able to identify whether I'm a human or not. Sounds completely stupid. Yeah, but it's not. Because it is not the activity of checking the box. It is the activities that leads to checking the box that is actually monitored. For example, how the cursor moves, whether it moves in a suspicious manner, like horizontally or vertically in a straight line, 
or how fast does the cursor respond to that particular request? Does it respond very slow? All these mannerisms that indicate in human nature are closely observed. Similar concept applies to the selection of image boxes as well because it's not about the accuracy. Even if you miss out one or two image boxes, it's completely all right and you can still clear the test with ease. Now all these informations and explanations that I've told you before are actually suggestions or theories by experts. It's not the actual working plan of the CAPTCHA because Google has never revealed them to the public for obvious reasons and it's completely understandable. Anyway, another theory by an expert suggests that Google also verifies or monitors your recent search activity before determining whether you are a human or a bot. And nowadays websites don't even rely on these checkboxes anymore because they completely depend on tracking mechanisms which collect details such as whether you are using a VPN or not, your cookies, your account creation activity, whether you misspelled a word or not. All the details that make you identify as a human being. So that's it. I guess you got some clarity regarding this CAPTCHA verification process and when you see those verification forms in any of the websites that you visit, you will have some sense of clarity, responsibility regarding filling out those forms, right? I hope so. <laughs> anyway, if you enjoyed the video, thank you for watching and see you in the next one.